So I want to talk to you a little bit about automation. And our previous speaker uh, talked a little bit about AI. But I want to focus on what's going to happen in the next five years, some of the innovations you're going to be seeing. You know, if I gave you a penny today and two pennies tomorrow and four the next day and then eight and then 16, doubling in that fashion, you might be surprised to find out that after only 25 days of doubling, you would have $335,000. And in fact, if I doubled in that fashion for five more days, you'd have almost $11 million. Now, my point here is, and, and the previous speaker alluded to it, that Moore's Law has us doubling the number of transistors on a wafer every two years. And we've been doing that now for 50 years. And so we're, we're actually in the 26th period of doubling since 1965. And what that means is, is that our processing power is going up. Now, it's not going up by double every two years because the transistors don't necessarily translate into compute power. But they are going up enough, and with the combination of machine learning, what we see in the next five years, I'm going to argue that we're going to start to see machines that displace us. In San Francisco, a permit was recently pulled to build a restaurant using an automated hamburger-making robot. It grinds its own meat. It slices the tomatoes. It makes the hamburger to your specifications, and it will do 400 hamburgers an hour. Only one employee needs to do that. <laughs> it turns out that the Associated Press is coming out with articles that have been written by bots. So they're replacing journalists. The first movie was actually produced just this year that was written by a bot. And not only can bots write, they can also read. There are reading robots that are looking at your email, and they're determining what your attitude is and telling the CEO, which of my 10 employees, what, it, what 10 employees are currently the most disgruntled? Computers can, can currently do that. Bots can currently do that. In agriculture, we have Bosch making a robot that is going to drive down the fields and punch weeds down into the ground. So instead of using chemicals to kill weeds, they identify the difference between a crop and a weed. And we know that those weeds will grow back, but those robots are going to continue to roll down the field and punch them down two or three more times until they kill them. So we're seeing advances in agriculture. We're seeing robots that make our food. Many of you saw that uh, Uber has announced that they're going to have 100 self-driving cars in Pittsburgh by the end of this year. Now, those self-driving cars will have safety engineers in them. However, we know that eventually self-driving cars are coming. And the, the question to ask yourself is, when are we going to see that replace human drivers because 10% of the US population are actually employed as professional drivers. And that might be a truck driver, a cab driver, somebody who's uh, driving, say, a tractor in the field. And by the way, 500 driverless tractors were sold last year. So we're going to see tractors out in the field all by themselves. A mine has recently started ore cars coming down from their mine to the smelter with no one in the driver's seat. So all of these innovations are, are occurring, and we're going to see them happen in the next five years. And my argument to you is that you need to be prepared for this. You need to make your children prepa prepared for it, because it is going to start to impact our society. We have, uh, in San Jose, a pizza-making robot. We have. Um, all these innovations coming, and the question is, you know, our politicians aren't even thinking about the problem. If we displace a worker, you know, the conventional wisdom is, well, they'll get a job in another sector. But, you know, I'm not sure that a professional driver is going to be able to get a computer job right away, and so we need to, as a society, start thinking about how do we train these people, and 
from a government standpoint, if you lose a worker who is paying income tax, you also then have to put him on unemployment. And so there's a double whammy to government. And my question to you is, at what point will someone come up with the idea of creating a tax on our robots, creating a tax on automation? <laughs> so those are, those are innovations that um, are going to come and as parents, as investors, as citizens, uh, I would encourage you to start encouraging your children to go into science, technology, engineering, and math. <laughs> as investors, <laughs> that'll work as well. As investors, you can look at companies that are doing automation over the next five years. But start looking at the articles that are being written about robotics and automation and machine intelligence. It is absolutely amazing. And start thinking about the problems we're going to have as a society so that instead of building walls or doing trade agreements and worrying about that, we're worrying about what's coming next. Now, ultimately, this is going to be a good thing because we're all going to be laying in hammocks and the robots are going to be building our buildings and making our food. In Australia, there's a company called Fastbrick. And if you look up Fastbrick, you'll see a video of a 30-foot robotic arm grabbing cinder blocks and stacking them neatly in a way that can build a house in under two days. So construction is coming, mining is coming, service industries are coming, and all these are going to impact jobs. We need to start thinking about it as a society. Thank you.